Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Hey guys, and welcome back to Sekiro, the ultimate guide, and today it is Fountainhead Part 2. Uh, this is, I guess, uh, a little shorter than the other Fountainhead issues, but issues, parts. So, when you come under the bridge, that big fish will uh, make a wee dive for a you. a koi fish? Aye, big, big giant koi. Aren't those supposed to represent fortune? Probably in some cultures. I think that's what they represent in this culture in particular. Well, it ain't particularly know, fortunate. Maybe. I could be totally wrong, I'm not Japanese. So there's kind of like a, an efficient way of like doing this, and this whole area is pretty complicated, but I guess we're just going to kind of try and work in sections and clear a bit out at a time. So obviously just follow the route that we take, because it's the most optimum one. And do not deviate by a singular inch, or else you will fuck it up. So don't start, don't start <laughs> thinking like a hero kid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay you enough to take the bullet. <laughs> You're just here to get to the end to get the platinum trophy. So there's kind of like levels and I guess this is like the lowest level that's like this little stream. So we're going to like get the items on this stream first just to kind of clear it out. That way we don't need to like come back and do it later. And there's like a few things here. It only takes a second. So we're just going to like get it done now. Get out of the oh, way. Oh, actually this is one of the few times that enemies actually drop something. These dogs or whatever the fucking are drop precious bait which you can feed to the big fish later on in this area and it gives you carp skills as a reward. Well, okay, so as it turns out, you can only feed it to precious bait because it only gives you a maximum amount of carp skills. It doesn't give you any more carp skills past that. So you would be correct if uh, that wasn't the case. Oh, I thought you could get infinite off nah. of it. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm pretty sure I have a save that with like 20 of these. I'm just like, oh, one of these days I'm just going to splodge out. <laughs> But no, I guess I just don't have enough carp skills this playthrough. Yeah, I nice. guess not. You don't even, nice. theoretically, you don't even really need that many carp skills either, because... Well, the only thing worth getting is the mask. So, what we're going to do here is uh, do this, like, crouching. Um, go right along the edge, but also get this one on the end, because this guy's slightly harder to kill than this guy. The guys with the bows have, like, less health and dying two hits, but the guys with the sword take a bit longer. So you can also aerial visceral the guys with the bow when they're doing that little like sideways hat. Yeah, yeah. But you know you don't you need to do that if you get the the like tank strats. Repel up here, get the gold can sugar, and yeah, the tank strats are gonna serve you pretty well. Yeah. I suppose of all the places that the aerial um, the aerial counter would be good, it would probably be this area. But this is the only place that it is good. This and those guys in the uh, Senpo, Senpo Temple. Temple. That's yeah. literally the only two instances in the entire game that you will ever use it. So this bit is a little, uh, it's kind of irritating. So you want to wait for this patrol to pass you in, I in either direction, really. It's not like a big deal, but... Um, oh, I remember this bit. They just walk so painfully slow, but you just drop behind them and then you use blood smoke and... It'll lay up the guy, use blood smoke, and they'll be like, Huh? Where did they go? And then you can just walk behind them really quickly. Yeah, and as long as you're about this far away, these guys won't see you. Now, you could, you could go up and just kill those guys now, but if you do, the guys uh, on this platform will end up seeing you. 
And uh, that's guy who like fucking last. football kicks the uh, lightning orbs at you and shit like that. Is... Yeah. So yeah, I remember this area. This guy on the patrol, we need to like wait for him to pass. It's quite annoying. Like there's a lot of waiting in this particular part. They are like fish people. Land isn't their preferred terrain. I mean, they do have legs, which kind of implies otherwise. Ah, uh, but what if they're swimming legs? <laughs> <laughs> they've got webbed toes, they're for swimming, not for walking. So, we use blood smoke uh, to kill those two guys, because the guys with the halberd tend to be quite a bit harder. Um, and as long as you backstab the patrolling guy in the middle, the guys that you left alive on the other platform won't see you. And then it means that you can uh, kill this guy this way, uh, and then you want to fight this guy like, to this side of things. Now... Why don't you just hop up and backstab him? Well, I tried to get his attention. Um, why, why did you try to get his attention? You could have just jumped up over that railing and backstabbed him. So, I I could have, but if he is aware of your position, it was just such a pain in the ass, like, because normally he'll just <laughs> jump down. This guy's like Shaolin soccer in the hell out of you. It's so irritating because this guy should just jump down, so I just fucking used a bunch of shurikens to kill him. But again, just... why didn't you just... From where you were, you were right behind him. Right, right, I, just right, jumped look, up I get over. what you're saying. I get it. Okay? I get it. You have a, I'm just saying, you, you forgot that there's a jump button. Right, so here's the thing. I didn't want to risk going up there and then those guys, like, getting wind of my location. That was why I didn't jump on the platform and backstab him. And also was like... Has he spotted me or not so I wouldn't be able to get the backstab and if I started swinging at him these guys end up getting my position and then they end up kicking the ball up at me. So I was just trying to like kill him on that side of the platform because if you kill him on that side they don't see you. Could, so I Can you jump up behind them, get the visceral and then blood smoke? Uh, you actually probably could do that and as well. And that solves that issue doesn't maybe, it? Yeah maybe, yeah maybe that would work. You could probably blood smoke the guy and then you can, that might be able to go back and get the Halberd guy as well. Pro that could yeah. probably be a thing. Sin. Maybe there's other ways that are slightly more efficient than yours. Anyway, no, so we're, we'd, re we'd be repelling up. I mean, there, there theoretically could be a more efficient way. As I get, I will admit oh, that bit is a I little bit clunky. I've died but... so many times on this bridge. These two what? can just... Why is this such an issue? I don't know. I just had endless issues with these two. I have no idea why. It's just two basic neither, guys. Neither do I. I have no clue, but I was just like, why can't I kill either of them? <laughs> so every time I tried to, like, block, I was getting ready to block this guy, I got shot. Sure. And then every time I dodged an arrow, he'd fucking hit me. Well, you just weren't using the axe enough, that'll be why. No, that was totally it. I didn't use the axe once when I played the game. Wow. No, wait, I used it twice because there was two guys with shields and Heretta. <laughs> that so, was it. Um, I guess it does kind of imply, like, when it explains it to you that they're meant for shields. Yeah. Uh, anyway, though, we... It doesn't say, this makes you a hyper-armor god. Yeah. If they said that, maybe I'd use it. <laughs> but I didn't. I was like, oh, Raven's Feather, that's cool. <laughs> no, it's fucking useless. <laughs> so, yeah, all we did there was just use the shuriken to, like, bait one out. That way the guy with the bow isn't going to shoot you. And if you've got more emblems, you can just run up and wail on them with the axe. But we're going to come up this part now. This is like a, like a secret part. But it's, like... just, it's a sort of hidden... Aye. Tunnel area. Now this leads to the one of the, the second pot noble in the game, and you need to come here if you want to do one of the quests. And I guess this quest is like theoretically worth doing because it gives you access to more carp scales, which in turn gives you access to the mask fragment part if you need it. Uh, so what we what we do here is we um, make sure to rest at the bonfire first. Uh, there is a reason for that. I can't remember why. Oh, I, so you rest at the bonfire here because if you die to the Sea Shaman Warrior that's coming up, it means you can just come back here. But, oh, so um, I think you need to advance the storyline by resting so that you can buy things from. Oh, that's actually also, that's a, that is also true. Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think I tried to speak to him and it wouldn't let me until I rested. So. Yeah. So uh, then you speak to him, exhaust his dialogue, and he'll give you truly precious bait, which is like the poisoned bait that you give to the big fish to kill it. And then Spoils. he becomes the fish. Yeah, when you do the quest, you end up becoming the fish. And then he ends up selling you the combined inventory of both pot nobles. But he also can sell you, like, Lapis Lazuli, which you need for one of the... Um, one upgrades. Of the, one of the upgrades, but also one of the trophies as well, or, like, achievements or whatever. Yeah. And going back through the hidden sort of tunnel. I guess I should mention it now that, that this is the first time that you'll come across a Lapis Lazuli. Uh, those are... Uh, materials used for fight for upgrading the last uh, part of your uh, weapons. 
Now you need to upgrade, I can't remember if the achievement is like upgrade all of them, but you need to upgrade a certain amount of weapons using the Lapis Lazuli, but you can't do that on one playthrough because you only get six on one playthrough. So it means that you absolutely have to do at least two playthroughs to platinum the game. It's like three to upgrade one. Um, or rather, it's not two playthroughs. It is you need to do one playthrough and then one new game plus playthrough minimum to platinum the game. I think it's three Lazuli to upgrade a weapon to so. its purple form. Just one, just to upgrade it to yeah. its final tier. I think it costs three per, uh, per prosthetic. So, like I said, um, just follow what we're doing as we explain things. But just to recap, what we've done there is when we... Uh, we went back to the the bridge platform that those two guys that Stephen had an issue with, and then we jumped off onto the side, which brought us back down to this lower level. And then we want to come around here and clear out these dogs. And we're also just going to pick up this item here the now as well. We Initially, I would get that at the end, but if it's just here, we might as well. Now, we're clearing out the dogs. That way they don't attack is when we fight the Seashaman Warrior. The Seashaman Warrior coming up is quite difficult, actually. I've, I've had a, a massive pain in the arse with them. Like, you can... You can just do the normal, like, technique or whatever, but he has a lot of health and, you know... He as... hits a lot harder as well than yeah. the one in the uh, dungeon, definitely. So, we want to get prepared. We want to get our... Um... So, we can do a drop attack on him. Now, I'm not sure if this is explicitly correct or not, and if you don't make this drop attack, you can just quit out and load back up, but I think you can only make the drop attack if you have Divine Confetti on your weapon. So, otherwise you just can't get the drop attack, but whenever I've put Divine Confetti on, I have been able to do it, so just bear that in mind. But getting the drop you attack should. is quite difficult on this guy, but it's obviously easier with Divine Confetti. You I should use Divine Confetti against this guy anyway. So, buff up, use the Aqua Sugar and stuff as well, and then also make sure you've got the Malcontent, uh, like, whistle thing on, that way you can get, like, the extra combo on. And I get a pretty good run at him, uh, actually. This is, I'm gonna show you, this Don't is like... Don't forget your purple shield, or did you not use it? Uh, no, no, the purple shield should be there yeah. as well. I, I just didn't think I've, uh, equipped it. Yeah, just make sure you've equipped your purple shield as well. You'll need that to block his, um... So that's, it, so straight up, that's, like, one health bar gone, and then it means you can immediately, like, run here. If you run here fast enough, it means you won't necessarily need to use the purple shield, because... If you're close enough to him when he does the beam attack, the beam attack will just straight up, like, miss you. So you can just wail on him, get, like, half his health gone. And I didn't even need to malcontents ring there, which is pretty cool. Um, I think i do it here, though. You did almost die to his, like, terror AoE. Yeah, so just be, just beware of that. You lost your Divine Confetti because of the shield R1. It's true. But, yeah. it, but at this point, this is okay, because... He's almost dead. Yeah, and it, it, it's worth, you know, taking the hit from the shield rather than just, like... But as you can see, if you you know if you make it fast enough and you're right up next to him when he does the beam, it'll just completely miss you. You don't need to use the shield. You'll keep your divine confetti on your weapon and you can just wail into him. So that is like this strat right there. Like, um, try and emulate that. That's your lapis lazuli. Exactly. So that, and that'll let you uh, upgrade one of your weapons at the very least. Now the thing is, is the lapis lazuli version of the the axe actually fucking wasn't slaps. all that great to no, be honest. Shite. I feel that the Sparking Axe was better, and it realistically shouldn't be, but it just, I don't know what the, the Lapis Lazuli does that the, that the Sparking Axe does It does more damage to ghosts. Right, okay. I'm pretty sure that's the whole well, point. Well, whatever it does, it doesn't explode and set things on fire, so... Is it a purple flame vent or a purple firecracker? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a purple spear. No, there's definitely a fire one that's purple as well, and it does more damage to- or you can use it and it has more effects against, like, ghosts or whatever. So against, like, the bull that was earlier in Fountainhead, against the fucking, uh, what are they called? The Shamison Warriors? Oh, I don't know. Um, against- Oh, so the- so the, the Lazuli weapons do more damage. I think they have, like, bonuses against those. So it's kind of like Divine Confetti for your prosthetic. It's just always on your prosthetic. Well, that, surely that'd be like the purple weapons and not the um, that's what I mean. Lazuli weapons. Well, that's some of the Lazuli ones are like that as well. Well, I, I mean, w whatever, it doesn't matter. At this point in the game, you can now just upgrade whatever you want. At this point in the game, all the all the like Lazuli prosthetics are irrelevant because you you've got everything you need to beat the game anyway. Exactly, and plus, you know, we've already... There's no more new tools to unlock, there's just the ones you have will get slightly better. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. There's only like two or three that are still worth using anyway. But to platinum the game, you do need to uh, upgrade um, to all the Lazulite weapons, so it is what it is. 
you so could dropping have. down here, those two guys are easy. But so okay, so the reason you saw we got more emblems with the ceremonial tanto, the reason for this is we're going to use the blood smoke a whole bunch just now. So blood smoke is such a good ninjutsu. So we just blood smoke like all four of these guys. Sometimes they will line up where you can get the fifth blood smoke up on the guy in the platform. It just kind of depends how is like how he will like RNG. Maybe you could like with a gatch and you could theoretically go and blood smoke him like the now uh, as the fourth one. You could probably jump up over there now. So he didn't actually get blood smoked, which is kind of annoying. Oh, you ran out of emblems. Well. So you so you could in theory, uh, at, like depending on where his placement is, if he isn't blocking the stairs and you can get onto the platform, you could blood smoke him as the fourth one. But ultimately, if it's just one guy you need to fight, that should be easy enough as opposed to having to fight five of them. So blood smoke, big help there. Yeah, it is the best ninjutsu. It's the only it's the only one that you can actually properly use because like when else do you really use puppet ninjutsu other than Mibu? Yeah, and then there's and like the the, the buff snake. one is. Yeah. Just, so now we're, we have to do another boss. Oh no, the buff board. one works with mortal draw, doesn't it? Uh, it I it don't buffs. know if it stacks. I think, I think it stacks mortal draw. If it does, then I mean, I guess that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it does. But now we are going to do a boss that is just a guy. So you don't need to worry. Like there isn't even like a, a strategy to this. I bet someone's made like a, a specific guide for this guy, but like just just hit him. Yeah, just hit him. Like there you go. Done. <laughs> So this is this guy will be the reason you might right. So you might have attempted. Do you want to know how I beat him? Uh, how? I just used see the uh, the that uh, combo that you can get the one that Ganichiro does the fucking oh, whirlwind sure, yeah, yeah. thing. Not the whirlwind. The other one where you just like the fucking dance of whatever it's called. That skill. I just done that after using the uh, the projected force um, buff with the flame yeah. vent and just went ham on him with that and it killed him in two combos. Well, I mean, I killed him in two hits, so I went. Well, yeah, you did, but I'm just saying that like, it was just as easy. I just pressed, I just pressed like L1 and R1 together. Now, something to just bear in mind is that that guy is the reason why you can't swim in the water because he kicks a lightning football at you the whole time, um, which I guess is something I've actually mentioned earlier because you should be just doing exactly as we we're doing. But if you try to swim in the water, that's that guy's the reason for you not being able to do it. We just want to go in the water for anyway. There's big fish in there. Well, we need to do it now in the next part, so that's what it is. Anyway, though, that is it for this part. Hopefully that was helpful, which I guess it should be. And uh, we'll see you in the next part where we wrap up the, the big bit in the middle and then move on to the rest of Fountainhead and then it's on to the, the last bits of the game. So, aye, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.